if we have control, if we see the coil pulsing like I showed at the end of this video, after replacing the igniter, if you saw pulsing when you started and there was no spark from that coil, we need a coil. And I'd like to tell you that that one's perfect too and there wouldn't be any, any variable to that. There's not. There's a variable to that one too and we'll cover it coming up. I have a couple case studies that will handle these variables. But it, it's still a good test even though it's not 100% accurate. It's a good direction test. Can you bail out your friend in the driveway of his house with his car and all you have is a test light? You can't. So where we are now, I said, is control testing is where we're going. Page 8, control testing. When we talk about control, guys, I am talking about coil negative. Coil negative. Coil negative is the control circuit of the ignition coil. There were some systems back in the day that would switch the power side of the ignition coil not any longer our coil all of our coils are ground side controlled there would be a transistor that is going to control the ground of this primary winding right here here's your transistor it switches the primary on and off okay what we're talking about would be the control wire. This would be your feed and this is control. Okay? Let me go to a different page. And I'm, I'm going to redraw this coil circuit. ICM igniter or PCM. You guys understand why I'm labeling this like that? Depends on the design where that transistor is going to live. Okay? Control testing. Now, I'm not talking about coil over plug yet. We'll plug that in here too, our coil over plug designs. Some of the coil over plug designs were, were a little bit different. All right, let's say, let's do this. Let's say this is a conventional ignition and by conventional I'm saying um, a distributor ignition one coil this is what what we would have okay uh, I'm not including the secondary in here just the primary circuit conventional ignition this is my control wire okay so what we're going to be doing in this next segment is control testing what do we mean by that that means is the transistor turning on and off to control the coil it's that simple Okay? I'm going to give you different ways to identify that. On a side note, some of our coil over plug systems will be designed like this. This wire, this is coil positive, this is coil negative, this wire right here would be the control wire. You cannot view the control on a coil over plug engine like this, this three wire design. Coil negative waveform, the voltage cannot be viewed. It's inside the coil. What is this wire all the time? A ground. So if you were to view the voltage on that wire, what would you see? A ground all the time. This side over here is coil positive. If you were to view a voltage waveform here, what would you see all the time? Battery voltage. The changing oscillating voltage wire, which is coil negative, it, it's the control wire. I can't see it. It's inside, the, it's inside of the coil itself. So we need to alter our control testing that I'm sharing with you right now that we're about to do. When it comes to these guys, we're going to alter that. And it's as simple as using an amp probe. I can measure the current flow of this primary here with an amp probe. I can measure the current flow 
of this coil here with an amp probe, I can measure coil primary current and use that as control, not voltage. Okay? What I'm going to teach you guys is putting a test light up here and looking for this test light to flicker and tell you if you have control. Do you understand on the three wire design that I just drew below this that you cannot do that? It can't be done. We have to alter what we're doing. We'll need a scope. We can view the computer's on off signal to the coil, but this is a low voltage signal and it will not light your test light. Can't use a test light on that. Maybe an LED test light, not totally sure. So I want to focus, guys. I want to focus on this design for right now. Okay? The vehicle doesn't start, and we'll follow the text that I have in my book. What can we use to identify our condition or, or what's causing our no spark condition? And I'm telling you that a test light, a conventional test light, don't use an LED test light here. You'll burn that LED test light up. The spikes are too high in the primary. You'll cook that LED test light, most likely. We use an incandescent test light on coil negative, and what we should see when we crank the engine over is this test light should flicker on and off. Good. If you crank the engine over, and that light does not flicker on and off, okay. that tells you that you have no control. Okay? All right, now when you do this test, I want you to be careful because when you crank an engine over, system voltage, which would be your feed of the coil, is connected to, system voltage will oscillate from the starter motor. And what you can have is a a voltage pattern that might be 10 and a half volts to 11 and a half volts, you know, oscillating because of the starter current changes with compression. And what would that do potentially to a test light bulb? It might make it look like it is flickering, but it's not. Okay, got a little, little bit of a fluctuation in that light that's just from starter current. So in my text in my book, what page is that? Eight? Where you guys are right now. What I'm telling you to do is to compare coil positive to coil negative. And it's real simple. They should look different from each other. And the reason I have you do that is to prevent you from mistakenly identifying a control, a flickering test light from system voltage changes from the starter. They should look distinctly different from each other. Okay? Okay, the title of the video that I want to refer you to for this segment that we're doing is this one right here. How to troubleshoot a no spark condition with a test light. This follows exactly our page 8 information. And we're not going to watch this right now, but I, I want to just get you to the part where this test light is flickering and show it to you. All right, let, let's talk about the diagram here for a second. This is a waste spark ignition system, okay? What we have is a coil here and a coil here enca encased in one housing the wiring for this coil, there would be a feed wire coming in, which happens to be the yellow middle wire. It splits and goes between the two coils, internal. And then inside of these coils would be a primary winding. And then what we would have is two control wires. They're red and blue. This blue wire would extend, come out of the harness, kind of screwed that up, didn't I? There's the blue side, and then the red side. This is going to come out, right? So do you understand the wiring for this? One positive, two controls. It's no different than what we're doing right now with one coil. We just have two control wires. 
What are we looking for? In this test, what am I doing? My test light is connected to ground, and I am looking for control. What is control? Control would be pulsing of this transistor. Can it be identified with a test light? Watch the test light. Red and green control wire to the coil. This would be coil negative control. Go ahead and crank it. Good. See the flicker Notice of the light. Notice the flicker in the test light indicating control of this coil. That's what we were looking for in the first place. So we do have coil negative control on that top wire. And what I'm going to do in the next shot, I'm moving that to the bottom blue wire. Just showing a before and after. And I'll, I'll get you back to the beginning of this video where I showed the control from the beginning. There you go. There, you see the flicker of that light. All right. At the beginning of this video, I did the same test. And we... We, you know, I jumped the gun on you guys. If you haven't seen this video before, I am, uh, it had a bad igniter, and I did all of my troubleshooting with a test light to, to condemn the igniter. I mean, there was a few tests at the end I needed to verify with my, with my scope, but most of it was done with the, with the test light. In this test right here, what am I doing? That's the middle wire. What wire is that? I know it's yellow. I can see that. It's a, yes, you're right, Jamie. It's the yellow wire. Which wire is that? That's my feed wire. <laughs> right? That's the power feed to the coils. My red and my blue are the two control wires. I'm just giving you a hard time, Jamie. It's no big deal. You're right. That is a yellow wire. That is my feed. Why would I be putting my test light into the feed wire? Is I want to compare the feed compared to the control and I should see a distinct difference between the two okay so and then I'm, I believe I'm cranking it in here let's get some sound uh, I didn't really see a, a flicker with that can, or with that feed wire but you can at times especially when the battery's weak and it's, it's a good practice to do it you saw though it didn't flicker really did it all right should be a nice steady light and it shouldn't go out that's a good feed the next thing we want to do is we want to check the controls. Okay, so I moved the test light to the red control wire that's coil negative control. And what we should see is a flicker in this test light if there is coil negative control. Uh, crank it. Okay. I was cranking right there. That was completely different than it was when we finished, wasn't it? All right, so I just wanted you to have a good visual of what I'm trying to illustrate here to you. It is a great direction tool to start with. If you have no control on the coil, you shouldn't be replacing the coil. Do you know how people say, well, let's try a coil? Do you know what I mean? Why would you try a coil when the coil is not even being turned on and off? It's that simple. It's a great beginning tool and I would I would like to tell you that it's perfect and and is accurate in all circumstances it is except there's an asterisk to this test and we'll cover that in a minute there is a time that this test can be misleading and we'll get to that but for now you understand that if we have control we're going to turn left and if we don't have control we're going to turn right if we have control, if we see the coil pulsing like I showed at the end of this video, after replacing the igniter, if you saw pulsing when you started and there was no spark from that coil, we need a coil. And I'd like to tell you that that one's perfect too, and there wouldn't be any, any variable to that. There's not. There's a variable to that one too, and we'll cover it coming up. I have a couple case studies that will handle these variables. But it, it's still a good test, even though it's not 100% accurate. It's a good direction test. Can you bail out your friend in the driveway of his house with his car, and all you have is a test light? You can't. control. All right. So this one should look completely different. The control wire should flicker on and off. Coil negative pulses means what? If coil negative is pulsing, that means we have control and our coil is bad. 
if coil negative doesn't pulse, don't put a coil in it. We have to go further. Now, if it doesn't pulse, what I'm saying is there's no control, okay? And there's two different things that it can look like. It might be a constant light, or it might be no light at all. No pulse, no control, no light. No pulse, no control, constant light. We treat these differently. Do you see this or statement here? That's the one we're going to cover further. And this one here, this bad coil, we need to put an asterisk there and say, let me find the page. We want to see the case study on page 20. C case study on page 20 is what we need to write there. Okay? This asterisk right here, C case study on page 20. There's a variable. It's bad coil, but you could still have a bad ignition module, I guess is what I'm telling you. I hate to do that to you. You know, the longer I teach, for years I'd say, it's a bad, it's a bad coil. You, know, you see control and you have no spark or, or weak spark, your coil's bad. But then I run into this case study down the road where I'm like, oh, crap, that changes that test, you know, and I need to warn you about it in case you change the coil and you still have no spark or weak spark. I don't want you to be upset with me. And so I do the, I'm doing the best I can with this test light. Uh, and I guess the more I use the test light here, the more I realize that we still need the scope and I'm trying to give you a test that avoids the scope but then I keep coming back to the scope because this test light isn't foolproof no matter which way I attack the circuit. We'll, we'll get to this case study here and we'll get to this case study here, okay? Just hang with me with this test light for a second. Coil negative pulses, no spark. We have a pulse, put a coil in it, okay? That's what this, the text here says. Forget the variable for a second. Coil negative doesn't pulse, means there's no control. And this hyperlink here is the video we were just watching, that Subaru. No control. So what does the light look like? If we have a constant light or if we have no light, we're in another fork in the road. Okay? Let's come back to this and let's plug in those. No control. We've identified our coil positive looks the same as coil negative. And let's say when we connect up our test light, it is lit constantly. Before we would condemn this ignition module, the igniter, the computer, wherever the transistor is, before we condemn that, are there things we need to be thinking about? Like what? Give me some some things that this igniter or computer or module would need to be able to function. Very good. I need to have inputs, which would be cam and crank, available to this device for it to function. It's not going to work on its own. So if we have no control, we may have an RPM input problem. We would want to check our RPM. Check our cam, check our crank, check your computer signal. What else? I would want to verify my inputs. What else? I'll give you another one. How about codes? Can I read, check my trouble codes? Can we back up to where we were before? 
Check our cam crank inputs, look at RPM signal on the scan tool. Now we're back to that, right? Okay, if all that is good, what about a computer that won't communicate with you? You turn the key on and the check engine light's not on. We should probably stop with the ignition system right there and go in a completely different direction because the computer's might potentially dead. So we verify that by turning the key on and looking for a 5-volt reference somewhere. Refer back to section 9, I believe, is my 5-volt reference chapter. We've talked about this. Co you, know, you, you started at the coil because you, you realize the car doesn't start, and that was the easiest place to, to start in your diagnostic process. You found no spark. You found no control. Then you turned the key on, looked for a light. There was no check engine light. You tried connecting your scan tool. It doesn't talk to you, right? We've just now changed direction. We're not on the ignition system anymore. We don't care about this transistor and the control wire or anything. Okay, let's say all of that is good. Inputs, no codes, or nothing that would help you. Powers and grounds are all good. Everything's talking. What would be your next step? Before you would, say, replace an igniter or ignition module, let's leave the PCM out of this one, right? Let's make this an igniter or ignition module. Before we would replace that device, you're not done with your checks here. The next step would be to come over here and check the same circuit. Since you're using your test light, stay with it. If the light is not lit in this location, but is, let me use my magic pen. I like it. Keeps this from being cluttered. If your light is lit here and is not lit here, what is the problem. We are back, very good Billy, we are back to our injector tests, our ground side switch circuit tests again, aren't we? The light being lit here means you have battery voltage here, 12 volts, right? And the light not being lit over here means you have zero volts, so you have an open in this wire, that's the only possible cause of that. We have an open. If your light is lit over here and lit over here how's that control wire it's good now we focus on the igniter itself and that's what I showed in that video does that make sense so let's see what I have written in the text to make sure we didn't miss anything constant light no pulse on coil negative, I'm, I'm throwing in the scope here. Measure coil primary current, we'll do that in a minute. Um, open in the control wire is an option. And open in the driver itself or an input problem, what do we do? Look, we just covered this. Move the test light to the module or PCM on the same wire. No light, what do we have? Open wire. Constant light, what do we have? A driver problem. But before we would condemn that driver, we would always do this. Powers, grounds, inputs. This is standard. Yes, Jamie. Can you run two, uh, can you actually use two, two test lights at the same time? Or is it sure. No, nah, you can use two test lights on this circuit. You're not going to hurt it. I don't know why you'd really feel the need to though. I mean, you wouldn't have to use two test lights. You wanted to, you're saying like, leave, leave one at the coil, leave one here, and then, then use this one over here. Yeah. You can do that. And, and let's talk about the test lights for a second, because I hear people, again, saying, man, you shouldn't use a test light on a computer-controlled circuit. Well, the people that would say that here have no idea and have never put an amp probe on an ignition coil and actually know what kind of current flow these things draw and know what kind of voltage spikes are on these circuits? We saw one the other day, 400 volt spikes on this coil negative circuit right here. Spiking upwards of 400 volts whenever this field collapses on the coil. And then the amperage through these things, anywhere from 6 to 10 amps of current is your average current flow. How much amperage is your incandescent bulb test light? 200 milliamps? you're not going to hurt this circuit, even with two test lights, Jamie. Not a chance. 
no dangers here at all. Okay? All right, what if the light doesn't light in this first test here? So what we said, we're doing control testing with the test light, right? And we start with this process, and this light in this location does not light. What's the first thing that you should do? Very good, Dave. Check and see if I have power on the other side. Make sure that this side is lighting. By the way, all of these tests, I am connected to ground so far. Okay? Um, and I don't know if I address this. I guess I have to. On a good circuit, this one on negative will light just as bright as the positive, you will see no difference. And the reason why is this coil on average is one to two ohms of resistance. It is a low, low ohm coil. It's a very high amperage coil. And your test light, when you connect it, is not causing any real measurable voltage drop across that coil and the voltage available to this test light it might be if it was 12 volts over here it might be 11.8 over here that you dropped at 0.2 of a volt through you know with your test light being connected are you going to see a bulb difference in brightness between 12 volts and 11.8 you won't you won't all right so, new scenario, I am connected to coil negative and the light doesn't light. Coil positive, it does. We want to make sure of that because if it doesn't light on coil positive, then you have no business attacking the control circuit of this coil if coil positive is dead. Right? So, coil positive is dead. What type of stuff are we thinking of? If we have no power on the coil positive circuit. Blown fuse, ignition switch, fusible link, right? Don't forget about Chrysler systems with ASD relays. What does a Chrysler system ASD relay do? That ASD provides power to this coil and to the fuel pump on the same circuit. And even when they split the relays and put a fuel pump relay in, they still controlled it off the same driver. So the point is, if you just have the key... If you just have the key on, you're not going to have power on the ignition coil. So then you're thinking, all right, well, I'll crank it over. You crank it over, you still don't have power on the ignition coil. If you crank an engine over on a Chrysler like this and you don't have power on the coil, you have an input problem. You're barking up the wrong tree. Why? Input problem. Wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. Well, if the fuel pump needs to have an RPM signal as a safety measure or we won't turn it on. If you're missing your input, the pump won't run either. It's a safety issue and neither will your ignition coil have positive. Be careful. It isn't just Chrysler that does this. Make sure you have power on coil positive when. I think I even say this in the text on page 8. Do I say check it when you're cranking? Check coil positive when you're cranking? There's two reasons I want to check coil positive cranking. One, so I can see that flutter from starter current and not mistake that for the flicker of coil negative control. And two would be to make sure that I'm getting power there through a relay circuit that needs an RPM signal. Crank it when you check it. All right, so we have power and we find no light on coil negative. Do you understand we are in a different direction than we were just a minute ago? With constant light. We have no light. So with no light, there are, we've done this already, see if this makes sense. We're going down the road and we have uh, a branch and we are going to do a test right here that tells us where we're going and here's what I want to know do I have current flow or not? This will answer my path. Over here, we have no current, and we're going to have options for faults. And over here, we have current, 
and we're going to have options for faults. Does that ring a bell? We just did this with injectors. Now we're on a, t on a coil primary circuit using a test light, and we're really doing the same thing. So what quick test can I do to verify this? Well, let's think about it for a second. If the coil negative control wire was shorted to ground, wouldn't we have a constant current flow through this coil on its way to ground all the time? And wouldn't that pull the voltage in this circuit down to zero all the time? And so if my test light's connected to ground and this is ground here, that's certainly not going to light the light. That would be one. A second one would be my driver in the computer is shorted and grounding the circuit all the time. Same thing, power comes through the coil on its way through the driver to ground and this whole circuit would be zero volts all the time. I'm connected to ground here. The test light's not going to light. Okay, that's the second scenario. The third one would be the coil is open. If the coil is open, I would have the same thing. I would have no current flow though. I would have no light, right? But I would have no current flow. Whoops. So what can we do? Simple. Watch. Leave your test light where it is. Connect your test light now to battery positive. If we connect this test light to battery positive and this light lights, we had current flow on that circuit. That means we had a ground somewhere on the circuit, whether it be wire or driver, and we're going this way. If the test light, when we connect it, does not light when we connect to battery positive, we are going this way. And what is over here with no current? Open coil winding. What's over here with current? Short to ground where? Either in the control or the driver, right? So control wire or driver. Does that make sense? Short to ground in the control wire or driver. So open coil winding, we're done. Short to ground in the control wire or driver, we're not done. We got to finish. This test light is lit. What do we do? Is it this or is it this? You guys should be able to answer this. We've done this before just in a little bit different format. You want an answer right now? Yeah. Based off of the light bulb flashing? It's not flashing, it's, it's, yeah, it's, lit no. all the, it's lit all the time, and I want you to be, a, there's a test we need to do to answer the question of whether or not the wire shorted to ground or whether or not my transistor is shorted to ground. Let me ask you this before you answer. Should coil negative ever be grounded all the time? on any car. No. no. And that would be a perspective you would need to know. This is an absolutely abnormal condition that should never happen. If it did, we would overheat that primary winding and cook that coil. Would be the result of this. And it will happen too. When you have this condition, it'll cook that coil. and You'll end up needing a coil too when you're done. You've got to find out what's causing this condition. Is it the driver, or is it the wire that's short at the ground? Go ahead, Dave. You were going to say something. Now. Okay, let's let's think about that for a second. Let me get rid of this arrow here. It's annoying. Me. This test light's lit. So, if you you're saying to put a voltmeter here, measure voltage. If this think about this now, if this light is lit. You have a feed going into the light. The light is lit because this is a ground. I promise you, no matter where you measure this circuit, it's going to be zero volts. We knew that before we put the voltmeter on it. So what I'm telling you is the voltmeter is not helping you at all. Amp clamp wouldn't help you either, Dave, because amperage is the same throughout the circuit. That 
amperage is flowing in here somewhere. Well, I guess you could make the argument if you put the amp clamp here and then put the amp clamp here, if you have no current over here, then the wire is shorted to ground in front of it. You could make that argument. There's an easier way. That, that, that would work. Yes, exactly, because we've done this before. All we need to do, all we need to do is disconnect this device and take note of what your test light does. If the test light stays lit, which one is it? The wire sorted to ground, right? If the test light goes out, it is the driver, whether it be an igniter or module or a PCM, right? Any warnings here we need to worry about? There sure is. Back feeds. Uh oh. We're on the same we're on the same thing we did before. If you are relying on this light to tell you what's going on, you better make sure that you have 12 volts available still here. Because if you don't, that light can backfeed and find a path somewhere else and light and give you inaccurate results. So when you do this type of testing, what should you do? Just disconnect the coil. Get that thing out of there, right? If you disconnect the coil, and you can, your light is connected to battery positive here, and that light is lit, I promise you, it's not a back feed, and that eliminates that variable, okay? And if that thing is still connected, you have to think about those variables, because when you unplug the computer, you may eliminate power to the other side and cause inaccurate readings. We're on the same thing we did before with the Noid light. Same thought process. It's not as hard as it sounds. It really isn't. We've done this before. Constant light, no pulse, coil negative. So I'm, I'm reading up here, just making sure we covered this good. Constant light, we did the constant, that was our opens. The one we just did was our no light one. No pulse on coil negative. What are our options here? Options would be no power to the coil. We want to make sure we have that. Check coil positive, cranking or running for some systems. And why did I put that note? Just ASD should be the note for you there. I'm picking on the ASD. There are other systems that do this. Chrysler's not the only one. I just know the name of that relay. So our options would be what? Open coil primary, short to ground on the control wire, or shorted driver. What do we do? Connect a test light now to battery positive, touch on the control wire. Now why would I put this note here? That, that should be underlined, highlighted with exclamation points. I don't want to back feed. I have coil unplugged to just make sure we don't get a back feed through the circuit. Okay? Do you understand how hard it is to write a good flow chart now? Because you're going through a flow in your mind and you're like, okay, and this is what I would do and this is what I would do. And then you're like, but when I get here, there's a few things I need to be thinking about when I do this test. This is an example of one of those. You leave that coil plugged in and, and that coil circuit loses power, you can potentially get a back feed and that light will light and you'll have inaccurate results of, as far as where you're going. Okay? All right, so we had a couple variables we need to talk about now, right? One of them was our bad coil, and we had an asterisk here, and another one was where? Um, coil negative, doesn't pulse, no control, and then there's this one, or the coil white. Let's do that one first. Coil negative doesn't pulse. No, sorry, that one will take longer. Let's do, let's do the bad coil one first. If we come to a car and coil negative pulses and we have no spark, what I'm telling you is the control is there, you have a bad coil. Pretty simple test, okay? All right, 
Let's plug that into this one. This was on Kia, Hyundai. I don't remember exactly. I have a video on this Honda that was similar. Um, guys, this is a bad module, okay? There's no spark. This is a bad module. The setup with this, if we're going to use the test light and compare this, coil positive. Here's your coil. Inside of this igniter is a transistor. Here's coil negative, here's coil positive. Test light connected to coil negative. On this car, this test light would flicker on and off. Okay? Telling us that we have control. You with me? And what I'm saying is if this vehicle doesn't have spark, if this coil doesn't have spark, what do we need? A coil. Okay, here's the asterisk. Here's the variable. This module was not grounding the coil properly. And that's why we didn't have spark. There is control, but it's weak. Look at the picture. This is coil. This is very similar to an injector pattern. So this is not completely new to you. If you're on the ground side of a circuit like this, which we are,